G'day everyone, Greg Brown, the Education Manager from CareFlight here. I want to talk to you a little bit today about Combat Application Tourniquets, or CATs as they're more widely known. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about how to use them. I'm not going to talk too much about where they've been used and personal experiences. In particular, I want to talk about how do you recognise a real one versus a fake one. Two points of note, first of all. The Combat Application Tourniquet, or CAT, is not really CareFlight's go-to arterial tourniquet. We're big fans of the Special Operations Forces Tactical Tourniquet Wide, or SOC TTW. Love those things to bits. Uh, we only use the CATs in training. Uh, we use the CATs in training because if you can use a CAT, you can use a SOC TTW. Uh, second point, if you want to learn how to use these things, if you want to learn how to improvise tourniquets, there's a couple options available to you. You can enrol in a course, or if you don't have time or the inclination, have a look online. Plenty of organisations out there putting some fantastic training videos out on tourniquets, uh, some from overseas, some closer to home in Australia here. Uh, for example, look at TACMED Australia up north coast of uh, New South Wales, doing some great work. So I'm not going to double up on their good work. As I said, I'm going to talk about fakes. So we've got a course coming up soon, uh, a threat course, Tactical Hostile uh, Response Emergency Access and Treatment Threat. You can see why we call it Threat. Uh, to do that course, we need to order some stores. So we put in an order for 16 one six CATs. We used a reputable supplier. I'm not going to mention the supplier's name. It's irrelevant to the conversation. Uh, and besides, if I did, I'm pretty sure he'd be devastated to learn that he was selling fake products. I'm going to tell him. In fact, I have told him already um, offline. But key note, we went through a reputable supplier, got four different types of products sent to us. Two were real, two were fake. Both of the fakes failed. Quickly talk about the real ones. Various generations in the real ones, doesn't really matter. What they have in common, good quality packaging. They're not sealed, they're not waterproof, they don't have to be, but the packaging is nice and tight. You can see the instruction booklet quite easily there. Red tips on tourniquets. You can see that there is lettering uh, printed on the strap itself. It's the lot number, not an expiry number, uh, but so far they look real. Open them up, have a look. As I said, two different generations here. They both work pretty similarly. Uh, first point though, the time tags are coloured. One's in grey, one's in white, but they're not black. Uh, some of the original versions of the real cats were in black, but in 2016, if you're buying a product that was made in 2005, 2006, you've got to be wondering about the supplier. As I said, printing on the strap itself, turn them inside out, this is the newest generation, this is a slightly older one, but on the back of the base plate, uh, it's got some information, supplier, well not so much supplier, but manufacturer, um, locations, contact details, websites, that kind of thing. One's got high quality printing on it, the other one is actually raised, um, it's in black, but it's just the plastic that's been stamped or raised. A um, bit of a difference in how you apply the tourniquets. As I said, though, I'm not going to go through how to apply them. Topic for a different day or enrol in the course. Enough said about the real ones. As I said, this little thing is about the fake ones. So we've got two different versions of fake ones. One really dodgy one and one that looks really good but still failed. First things first, the packaging. Much looser. So one versus a real. You can see the difference in the packaging. As I said, they don't need to be sealed, but that is fairly tight, smooth. This is loose uh, and rough. In fact, through the hole inside of this, you can see the threads coming out already. The product is starting to degrade and it's never actually been applied on a real person. So the first one I opened up was this one here, all in black. As I said, some of the original versions were all in black. Didn't hold that against it, but the first thing I noticed was it was quite short. A legitimate combat application tourniquet should be around about 90 centimetres long, somewhere between 87 and 90. This one here is 14 centimetres too short. Doesn't sound like much, but I've treated some pretty big contractors in my time overseas with the Army, and those 14 centimetres come really useful when you're trying to get around some fat dude's thigh. So the fact this is shorter is in fact a real problem. Next, just look at the quality of the end here. So, real one, 
round, smooth, no loose edges, no jagged bits, fake one. Look at that. Dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. Next with this one here, whilst there is information on the back of the plate, it's really blurry. It doesn't look real. When I compared it to a legitimate one, well, there is no comparison. Okay, fake one, real one, looks fake, is fake. Next, the thread that holds the self-adhesing band onto the back of the strap on the fake ones is the same colour as the strap. On the real ones, it's slightly lighter. So the real ones, the thread that comes down the sides here, it's like a, a slate grey or a charcoal colour. These ones here, different thread length, different thread colour, different distance from the side, so it starts to peel already. The windless clip. This bit here is vitally important for your cat to work. Once you tighten the windlass, that there, with that windless clip, holds it in place. It's got to be strong. Problem is, this one just isn't. Bends out. So I thought I'd have a go and apply it to myself and see what happened. I never knew. Maybe if it was fake and it was cheap, it still worked in training. Save a few bucks, that kind of thing. Turns out that it failed on myself. So, excuse my leg up on the table. Oh, I'll do it the other way for the uh, purpose of the video. So I did the righty, you know, having such massive legs and all. Went through both roots of the buckle, hold on to the free running end, hold on to the strap, pulled it tight. But when I tighten the windlass rod, you can see it's just pulling straight through the buckle. So I don't know, I've lost count, but you can obviously see that's not working. If you bought this product here thinking it was legitimate, have it in your tactical kit, in your grab bag, even in the glove box of your car, you apply it on yourself, or worse, apply it on a loved one and it fails, how do you feel? It's not worth the extra few cents you save if it doesn't save a life. So, that's the first fake, doesn't work. Now the second fake, I take my hats off to the guys who made this. They've made it look really good. You know, if you compare this packaging to that packaging, it's pretty similar. Okay, it's a bit loose, but when you look inside the packet, you know, it's got the red tip still, it looks pretty good. Uh, you can't see inside there, but it does have a white tag. Here it is there, so far, so good. What got me thinking though was the quality of the writing there. It's quite blurry, it's quite big. Now, we all know that the most important medical device you can carry is a good quality permanent pen. But when you're shaking because you're trying to write the time on your mate's tourniquet because he's just cut his leg off with a chainsaw, you need all the space you can get. A Sharpie is not a precision implement. So that tag there got me thinking that maybe something wasn't right. So I investigated further. The back of the plate, there's nothing. Nothing printed on there, nothing embossed on there. It's cheap, it's flimsy, there's nothing on there, and no lot numbers or anything written on the belt itself. So again, didn't sound right. Next, the self-adhesing band. It just doesn't stick well. When you compare a real one to a fake one, look, it's gonna be hard to see in the video, but the distance between the pills of the self-adhesing band loops, there's no comparison. On the real one, it's got a zigzag through it, so it's guaranteed to stick. On the fake one, it's just lines. It doesn't stick. But I thought, again, you never know. It's a good quality fake, I'll give it that. Maybe it will save a few dollars for training. Wouldn't even consider in, you know, using it on a real person in real circumstances, but in training, you never know. So, let's have a look. Again, excuse my leg up on the table. Do the righty. Go through both loops, free running end, windless rod, pull it tight. Now, turn the windless rod. So far, so good. But now, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm 
and turning, and turning, and turning. If this was a soft TTW, if this was a real cat, my foot would be numb, well and truly. What's going on? First of all, there's no metal in this windless rod, so the windless rod is bending, it's buckling, it's about to snap. But look at this. It's pulling the ribbon from the tip through the buckle. What it's meant to do is stop at the buckle and tighten around the leg. Instead, it's tightening through the end here. So this here, I can just keep on turning. Okay, not working. Full movement in the leg, full feeling, full circulation. It's dodgy, it's not working. And if you have a look, that plate down the bottom is all buckled, it's bent beyond recognition. So, undo that without losing an eye. You know, there's a lot of turns in that. Look at that. That's how much I tightened it and it still didn't work. I'm gonna leave that one in place and demonstrate with the real one. So this is the latest generation cat. As I said, there's a few differences. The key differences, the key difference is I only got a single routing buckle. That's a good thing because it means whether you're applying it to yourself, applying it to your mate, arm, leg, doesn't matter. One technique. And it works. So, start tightening. One turn, two turns, turns, yeah, that's getting tight. Three turns. I cannot stand the pain anymore and my toes are going numb. Four turns and this sucker's worked. Same technique, two big differences. So I guess the big question is, is it really important? You know, for the purpose of training, it doesn't matter. But you've got to train the way you fight, because hopefully you're going to fight to win. If you're training with a device that fails all the time, you're not going to reach for it in real life. So from my point of view, it's worth buying the real ones. As I said, I've contacted the uh, retailer, and uh, he's replacing them for us right now. If you have any questions, guys, please feel free to contact us at Careflight. Uh, our email address, education at careflight.org. Uh, follow us on Twitter, mycareflight underscore ed, or the usual Facebook sites, websites as well.